I heard this saying, and I feel like it's so true. It says you either one, everybody is either one of three things, right? So everybody is either in the field, on the sideline, or in the stand. So it made me question, you know, got to thinking about my own life, you know, how I am. And I got to wonder, am I in the field, on the sideline, or in the stand, right? And me having a sports perspective, a background of, you know, uh, af athletics, I definitely understood the analogy right away because, you know, me, somebody who was used to starting my whole career, me being on the sidelines was, was never an option. And then I got thinking about the stands, though, right? So, like, being in the stands, being in the stands, watching other people play. So I'm like, dang, that's a different perspective right there. In some way, some fashion, we all are in the stands, right? You know, in some way, some fashion, we're all looking at other people observing their life, right, in some way. So that's what I got to thinking. But then, you know, as the book proceeded on, and as the message became more clear, you know, as I started synthesizing things, right, um, realized that, you know, wait a minute, this is really where you're getting at, right? So, like, when you're in the field, when you're on the field, you're the person, you know, that's doing your day-to-day, -day, right? You're doing your day-to-day. -day. This is to put it in just day-to-day -day normal terms, no sports. When you're in the field, you're doing your day-to-day -day job, right? So whether your job is, whatever your job is, you're in the field when you're doing your job, right? So that makes sense to me. So then, you you know, to the next step, you go along to, you know, being on the sideline, right? So being on the sideline, maybe you're the person that, you know, you're waiting for the raise, right? You Maybe you're at your job and you're waiting for a raise. You're waiting for your, your boss to finally notice all the potential, all the effort that you've been putting in over these last couple of months. And for them to get Susan out the way for you to get the raise, right? So you're on the sideline. You're observing Susan who's out there, you know, in the position that you want to be in. But you're, you know, runner up. You're doing the drills. You're on the sideline. So I guess the sports references is just by nature. All right. So, you know, the next thing, though, right? So the people that's in the stands, that was very interesting. Because like I said, initially, I'm like, everybody in the stands and, and some in some capacity, you're in the stands. But then I got to thinking about it like this, right? So check this out. When you're in the stands, you are observing somebody else. You're observing somebody else to the standpoint of you're not even observing them because you're about to try to be in that position in life, right? You're not observing them because you're in the same career goal. You're in the same career path. You're observing them just purely out of being nosy and also purely out of just comparing where you're at to where they at, right? So you're in the stands being nosy, you know, enjoying the game, right? We all, we, we watch the, the pro athletes do what they do so we can see how many points they score, right? So we're being nosy, right? But at the same time, you're not even about to be a pro athlete. So why are you watching this game? That's where we're getting at, right? So this is the Wisdom Wednesday factor of this. You know, I'm always coming with it, guys. Why are you watching a NBA game if you have no, if you have no, you know, you, you don't plan on being an NBA player, so why are you watching an NBA game? Why are you in the stands watching what somebody else is doing on your little phone or on Instagram in a whole different niche that you don't even plan on being in, but you're comparing their outcome, right? You're comparing their outcome, you know, what they've already achieved, the outcome from their inputs that's completely niche, completely different niche than what you are. So you're in the stands, not on the sideline. So with this whole thing, you got to thinking like, you know, where do you want to be at? Right. So if you got, you know, are you in the are you in the stands? Right. Are you on the sideline? Or are you on the field? Where do you want to be? Where's the optimal place of success? Right. So I got to thinking, you know somebody who has the sports background who always wanted to be in the field being in the field is great because when you're in the field you're playing you're playing to win you know you're the one that the people in the stands is watching you know they talking what they got to say but at the same time they in the stands so who cares about them right so you get where i'm going right so okay the field is cool right so then you got the stands who cares about them so the stands i think we can say we don't want to be in the stands right i think that's fair to say right now we got the sideline, right? So the sideline are the, is the people who are watching the people in the field. You're watching the person that's in your desired position. You're watching them. You're, you know, picking up things that you can learn. But if they're in your desired position, you're watching to see when you're, when's the perfect time to lap them? When's the perfect time to pass them, right? 
So where's the best position? Where's the most optimal position? Where would you want to be? I feel like, you know, obviously the spotlight is on the one, the people in the field, all eyes on them, which is great. But then it comes into where you have to know yourself, right? So for me, I've always felt like I've performed better, whatever it is. I perform a lot better when the spotlight is on me. When I know people are watching, when I know it's happening, I perform better. No different than, you know, where my life literally is at right now. I perform better in all avenues when I got the spotlight on me. That's just somebody that's, I don't know, that's just who I am. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I like to do what I do when it's me versus me too. But then on the flip side of things, right, it's the benefits to being on the sideline, what I can see is if you're on a sideline and you know you're not fully prepared, but at the same time, you know, the person in front of you is very good, right? Then you get to figure out what they doing right and also how you can improve on it so you can be better than them. So I do think being on the sideline has its perks. So as long as you are on the sideline and you're clear as to you're being on the sideline, you're aware that you are on the sideline, and also you're, you know, you're striving to move forward to get off that sideline, I believe that being on the sideline is equal to being on the field. And what the reason I say being equal to being on the field is because when you're on the sideline, you have to be prepared to get in the field. You don't know if Susan will so show up sick one day. You feel me? What if Susan show up sick and you write in line and then that's your spot, right? So it's equal. And the reason why it's equal because, you know, you're probably thinking like, well, if you're on the sideline, you're at a disadvantage because you didn't get to practice all week with the starters, right? You didn't get to go over the new meetings with all the new information that's needed for this important meeting that Susan just missed. So how is it fair that when they call you in, you're expected to perform better than Susan so you can become the starter? How is that even fair? Well, let me tell you how it's fair because on the flip side, the person that's the starter, Susan, right? The starter the person that's in your position, that's your desired position, if they are aware, then they know that there's somebody else that's looking at them and they are waiting for them to slip up. You feel me? They're waiting for them to slip up, for them to show that they don't deserve to be where they at because then they're going to take their position. So it's literally two sides of the same coin. It's very, very equal in that matter. So you got to realize that if you feel like you're at a place in life where you don't want to be, whether it's a position, a job position, maybe it's a body goal, maybe it's something, you know, whatever it is, realize that even once you get it, you're going to have to work to keep it because there's going to be somebody else that was in the same position that you were in on the sideline, watching you play in the field and watching how they can get better than you. So realize, enjoy the process right now. Because it's not going to be too much different once you get where you want to go. Because then you got to stay there. So then you got to keep playing on the field. And that's what you got to really realize, guys. It gives me goosebumps thinking about it. It gives me goosebumps because I live it. Guys, once you get to the position where you want to be, then you have to stay there. And not only stay there, you got to get better and better and better. Then you got to find new competition. I don't know if you watch Manny Pacquiao versus Ugas, but look at Ugas. You know, he was the underdog, right? Manny Pacquiao, top dog. He got to stay there. Ugas, he got to eat his chain, right? He, he trying to get there. He trying to get there. Manny got to stay there. There's somebody that's working a nine to five right now, trying to be an entrepreneur, trying to get their wholesale real estate checks, right? I got to stay there. I got to stay there and get better. Somebody else trying to get it. They looking maybe at me right now. He's doing whatever he's doing. Maybe I can do that. But here's the thing. I want you guys to know, and I'm leave you with this. I had a conversation today. This guy was like, man, how you closing deals? The market is so, you know, what's some call it, right? I said, bro, you got to have that abundance mindset. He said, man, I'll be trying to. I said, bro, that's the only option. That's the only option. You have to have an abundance mindset to be successful. That's the only way. I ended up with that. And he said, damn, bro, you're right. You're right. And I said, yeah, like, yeah. I know I'm right. But at the same time, guys, I'm human too. We all get in our, you know, some ways, but it's about being consciously aware and changing the direction of our thought pattern. That way we attract, you know, things that feel good to us. So guys, I told him it's enough room for everybody to eat at the table. He said, bro, if the people come into the market, I don't, I said, bro, it's enough room for everybody to eat. You just got to have that abundance mindset. He said, you right. And I, I do. I said, yes, you do. You do. You got to have an abundance mindset. It's enough room for everybody to eat. As long as your heart is in every step, then you are already a success. As always, get the step in. Get on the field or stay on the sideline. Or keep watching from the stands.